just to make very sure you're in the right, you're in the right room, in the right session, um, we are talking about WebAssembly component model and uh, how we use that for our APIs, how can you use that for APIs, and we do a little bit of demoing. I hope we can do all this stuff in 30 minutes. There's a lot to go through in about 30 minutes. Um, a little bit about myself. I have yeah, I'm started with all the computer and cloud stuff when I was 13, 12 or 13 years old, and then I was worked for Volkswagen and Audi worldwide for a quite a long time as in different positions from software developer system architect, I think that's what they called it. To me, it's, it was a Linux system administrator. Um, then I've joined F5 and Nginx and worked in product management for Nginx till oh, no, till spring this year. Um, and then I made a crazy decision to join a small German startup as a lead of engineering or head of engineering. Um, and that's what I'm currently doing. So a little bit about the promises, what we will learn today, or what we will go through today. So first of all, from the session on the website, we say we do a deep dive into what WebAssembly component model is and discover its inner workings. Disclaimer as deep as it is possible in 15, 20 minutes, okay? Um, then we understand why WIT and the ecosystem surrounding the concepts are very, very important for the WebAssembly component model. And then we do a little bit shedding light on the, how that works under the hood and do a practical demo. These are the promises. If you agree with these things and you think that's why you are here, then you can stay here, otherwise you should go and see another session in another room when you're not interested in these things, which is fine. Um, okay, I think the promises and the agenda is kind of uh, redundant. We will do a little bit of a theoretical background behind what is WebAssembly and component model, and uh, then we look at the tooling, how we can compose components together, and what is WARG and WAG and WAGGage and what else, and then we do a little bit of demos. Show of hands, who is the first time attendee of WASMCon and has never worked with WASM before? Okay, perfect. And who is it like, who would count himself as a WASM newbie? Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so reason for that is you have to, especially with WebAssembly and this whole ecosystem, you have to do it. I can tell you a whole day, we could have started at 8 a.m. this morning till 5 a.m. tomorrow. If you just hear what I'm saying and maybe take notes, this is good, but you have to practically doing it. This is what I can tell you after working for almost three years with WebAssembly. You have to sit down and do it and feel the pain and the joy of things that are finally working when they're working. A little bit of history, when I was working um, at Nginx, we have started the implementation into Nginx as a proxy server as well as Nginx unit, and I did some research. And while I'm doing research, I created this word crowd, or cloud, however you want to call that. And this is massive. Like, there are a lot of different things you have probably not heard before. Um, and with the Wasm Preview 2, or the Wasm Preview 2, there was new stuff coming to this thing. Spin from Fermion was, was part of this word crowd before, but the whole thing of components and WAG and WAGGage and JCO and WARCs and WASM tools, and this list can go on for forever. The amount of things we will come across in this talk and the ecosystem for WebAssembly is huge. It's like diving into a completely separate world of engineering and cloud computing, not kidding. This is. This is like, I remember when I first heard about Docker in 2017, this feels similar. We hear and see something that is so different that you have never seen before. This is probably um, what you will encounter when you start learning WebAssembly. Little bit of the basics about WebAssembly, and I'm pretty sure you have heard that over the course of the day a couple of times, but just repeatedly say what WebAssembly is. WebAssembly is a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine. This is not super important, but it can be helpful if you consider what is basically a stack-based virtual machine, what is this assembly format. And WebAssembly, it, in its design, says it's a portable compilation target for different programming languages, enabling deployment on the web for the client and server applications. Okay. 
this, web, this slide, when I first, three years ago, heard about WebAssembly and I, I read these definitions about what is WebAssembly, stack based virtual machine, binary instruction format, you can write it in several languages, compile it to this binary instruction format. I was like, this sounds somehow familiar. I was like scratching my head and I remember it was in the middle of the night. I was like, this, is, this sounds like something I have read years ago, like a long, long time ago. And I was going to my bookshelf. There was an almost very dusty book in it. And you know what? <laughs> I was like the Java code reference, like on the first three pages, and I've not took a picture of the book, but it's literally what Java said like, I don't know, 20 years ago. Because Java is a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine. If you compile Java or Kotlin to a WAR file or a JAR file, at the end, what the JVM is doing is just reading these binary instructions executed. It's nothing else. It's, a, it's similar. It's very similar to what we are doing here. Maybe that can create a little bridge in your head from what is the old stuff and what is maybe the new stuff. This stack-based virtual machine for binary instruction format is basically something that you have might have heard um, 20 years ago. Okay. So, what languages can be compiled into WebAssembly core modules? If you would like to make notes, do this and make a note about what is a WebAssembly core module and what is a WebAssembly component and no, they're not the same. Very important. WebAssembly core modules can be created by a WET file. This WHAT is basically a specific language where you can write these binary instructions in a text-based format and compile it to a WebAssembly binary. It's a, like a very, very simple text file. Then you can use Rust and C and Go and Python and JavaScript and Kotlin to create this core modules. I have a table in a couple of slides where we compare what is a module, a core module, compared to a component. And why WIT and WebAssembly system interface, short WASI, is super important. A little bit right now about this. The only data types you're allowed to share or you're able to share within core WebAssembly binary are trivial data types. Floats, integer. That's it. If you would like to share data within core module without using WASI, without using the WIT stuff we're using in the component model and we will come in a couple of minutes to, you're limited to integers and floats. So what you, would you do when you would like to share a string, array of data, anything that's a non-trivial data type? Well, we have implemented this in Nginx by ourselves before we worked on the component model. And in WebAssembly for core modules, there's something you might have heard called linear memory. And that's where you share data with this sandboxed environment in your WebAssembly system. So what you actually do is, and I have put this slide out of this um, presentation, and would just ma make a note 10 seconds on the, on the verbal line. Linear memory management by yourself is not painful. It's not joyful. That is really painful. So if you don't want to do it, don't do it, right? That's why I lost so much, so much hairs, and that's why Ramesh always wears a red head, um, because we do stuff like this most of the time. So, one sentence about linear memory. Linear memory is this part of memory that the WASM sandbox has access to. So if you would like to send non-trivial data types to this core WASM binary, while it's running, you send data to a specific memory page that is allocated inside of the sandbox, you send data to it, and the only thing you do is basically sending raw bytes in. And this makes it possible to communicate with these functions because the only thing you need is a trivial data type. You need a pointer to a specific memory page and you need an offset, like a length. How many bytes are you sending into this memory page? Trivial data types. This is the communication for WebAssembly core modules. But this is not what we do today. We talk about the joyful WebAssembly component model and you have heard about WASI today, right? Have you heard about WASI today? I think everybody has heard about WASI, so we are not explaining WebAssembly system interface again, like the fifth time. But what I would like to do is to give you this high-level overview about what is a WebAssembly core module in the second column and what is a component in the right column. Abstractation layer is what we say low-level. 
and a higher level, because for a higher level we have this WIT files, for example. Then how can we operate with the, with the core modules? Just, and this is, this is the thing, if you would like to come, like to, to talk from one core module to another, the only way of doing this is with this linear memory management. Painful, really painful. Interface mode, import expert with trivial data types like integer and float. And in the component world, we have wit. We will come to this in a second. Dependency management is not a thing in, with raw WebAssembly binaries. There's nothing like we will see in the component model in a second. And the binary format is basically a standard resin binary for the resin binaries and for a component. It is basically a wrapper around an WebAssembly binary, but this is on the next page. So now, finally, thanks Wasm Cloud for this great picture. I'm always using it and give great credits to the people of, of Wasm Cloud because that's an amazing picture. And I've, I don't even try to rebuild it by because I would rebuild it in the exact same way and that would be not nice. So credits to the people of Wasm Cloud for this amazing picture um, explaining what these components are. First sentence, containers are module, con components are containers for modules which express their interfaces and dependencies via WIT. If that sounds unfamiliar, no problem, we will come to this in a second. And components are self-describing units of code that can interact only through interfaces instead of shared memory. So if you would like to export or import data between those components, you can do this by its defined interfaces. And internally, the component could include multiple traditional or core WebAssembly modules or other components. And we will do this in the demo, okay? So we have learned a component is basically a wrapper around a core WebAssembly binary, which makes it easy to carry around, to deploy, to stack on top of each other, okay? Think about you have apples or f any kind of fruit, you whatever. There is a specific reason why they sell food in net or bags in the supermarket. Because it's not easy and not trivial to carry around 20 apples at home if they're not packed in, an, in, like, in a consumable and carryable format. Makes sense, right? So 20 apples like this, this wouldn't be nice. Same thing for components in some sort, right? So component is kind of a net around um, a WebAssembly core binary. So we have heard about WIT for a couple of times today. The WebAssembly interface type, WebAssembly interface type. It is not a programming language. It is not a scripting language. It is a description of contracts. It is a description of, an, of worlds and packages and data types. And why is that so important? Why is WIT so important? WIT explains what a component that implements this WIT, and this is something we do in the demo, has to basically implement and, and, ex, and ex, expect um, to be called in terms of data types and stuff. Um, we have a Hello Bob component. This is something we'll implement. And then you will see why this WIT stuff is important. And don't be afraid of WIT. That my, I remember the first time I heard about WIT files uh, was um, when we have implemented the WASI Preview 2 components for HTTP. Um, using the WebAssembly component model for Nginx unit, and I saw these WIT definitions for WASI HTTP proxy, and I was like, holy cow, what is, that looks, this looks complicated. It really isn't. You read the documentation at least once, maybe twice, and then remember what we have said at the beginning, get your hands dirty, just write WIT files, create your own components, create a Hello Bob component, what we will do in two minutes, just do it a small thing. Don't start with something complex. Just go ahead and use and learn the techniques of stacking the things together, deploy them, build them, small things, like the Hello Bob thing we do in five minutes. So, the WIT files are basically contracts. Okay, out of these contracts with tooling, we create interfaces or bindings for Rust, for example. And when you come across the documentation, you will see something that is called the canonical ABI, the application binary interface. And this canonical binary or application binary interface 
is a contract where both components agree on and say, okay, look, if you call this function, you have to accept a string or a list of specific data types, and the WIT file is independent of the programming language. Super important. Independent of the programming language. And then you generate bindings out of this WIT file. In Rust, in the demo, we use WIT bindgen. That's a Rust thing, so we generate bindings out of this WIT file for Rust. If you do this for Go or for TypeScript, you take the WIT file and you generate your bindings for TypeScript specifically, okay? Super important. And out of this bindings, we generate this canonical ABI, this binary interface between the components that they can exchange, exchange data. Okay, this is a little bit about tooling. In the demo, we will come about WARC, we will come about WAC, we will uh, come about, and this is interesting, as a German, I would say WKG, but the, the US people I'm talking with, they say it's WACKAGE, and it's WACKAGE because KG is package, and that's why it's WACKAGE, okay? That's what I've learned today. So, WKG is WACKAGE, if you, c yeah. Fine, okay, let's agree that is the wackage thing, and we will do some wackaging in the demo as well, okay, good. Um, working with components, this is like an illustration of what the documentation is saying, how to work with components. Authoring a component is we create a component. Composing is like stacking things on top of each other, and running is you need a runtime to execute um, your component. You can use Wasm time, you can spin, you can use a spin cube for Kubernetes, you can use Nginx unit, um, and a lot of others. That's just the subset of runtimes I have used. And distributing components, this is super, super important because what is the most important thing, I have to make the WebAssembly component consumable by others, okay? So we push it to an WARC or an OCI-based registry, and we, in this demo, we will use wa.dev, um, to look into binaries and things like that. And this, I think, is enough for, for words. Now we do, some, uh, we do some demoing. Okay, so what we do here is we firstly do, um, we check a, a little bit the, the width stuff. So we do have something here that is called Hello Bob. Composing components, and there's a Hello Bob and in Hello Bob, we do have a wit world. And is that uh, the white thing good enough for you? I think it's better than dark mode, okay? So what we see here is a, is a package on the very top, and then we define an interface and a world. As said, very generic, very simple, nothing complicated in here. The package basically has a namespace, and then a colon, and then a package description and a specific version. When we now go to wa.dev, for example, here, what we can actually see here is, let's see, here is the hello Bob package, and this should match what we see here, right? Hello Bob package, and this is that. So wa.dev is something um, that's created by, the, by Danny, from um, Jeff Labs. You've probably heard a um, session from him earlier. And what it basically does is you can push a package, it analyzes the package and gives you a very nice UI where we can see what is actually going on. Very important, take a note of this wit here. Because what we do when we work with packages, we try to separate the concerns. What we see in this screen is a wit definition. So this is a contract independent of the programming language. It's just the contract. And what we do is we define a world that's called Hello Bob, and it has an export. An export is literally what it means. It exports a function, it provides a function that is named Hello, okay? And this interface is something I like to do because it keeps the world definition clean. That means I can have multiple functions and structures and complex data types in an interface. I can define an interface and then I can have my world pretty slick and pretty easy to understand because it exports and give an interface. Okay, so far so good for the, um, for the width definition. 
Next thing we can do is, as soon as we have the WIT file, we can use the wackage, the WKG thing, and publish this world, um, bit, or build it first. So there's WKG publish, uh, no, build. And we say build, and then we give it the WIT dir. And then what it basically is doing is it generates a WebAssembly binary, like this one, and then we can push it to the registry. I'm not doing this because I already pushed it, and then we see that is here with. Super important, that's why I'm standing up on stage and say this very clear. This is a WIT package. This is not a component you can run anywhere, is that clear? This is a definition of an interface. This is nothing you can run. That's why it is called WIT. We will see a component in a second, but this is not a component in its inner workings. That's a WIT definition. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we would like to call a business implementation, basically, that implements this contract. You can use the WIT file in a cargo component, or in the cargo component thing, or you can target it, and this is what we do, and the reason why I like it this way is I can use the command called cargo component new. Also not doing it because I've already done it, but what we can see here is, doing this, um, we do cargo component new dash dash lib. Super important, never ever forget the dash dash lib when we're talking about WebAssembly components. I've done that a couple of times, not good, because it will not work when you don't create a library. And with dash dash target, we point out the cargo command to say target this specific um, interface, that's in the wrong one, that's the web one, we need the package one, but the idea is the same, okay? We create this and then it creates an it creates a specific cargo package, and in our case, it's the business implementation of Hello Bob. So we go into the Hello Bob implementation, and the implementation is literally what it is, what it says. It is when we look at the cargo toml, we can see it is targeting the Hello Bob package we just saw here. Targeting means and. I'm, sh yeah, you can judge me because package is a, is a shitty name. We should, this should be an interface or type or something that is not called package. That's my bad. But hello, Bob, type or types, and we target this. And what this component is doing, it is implementing the business logic. And we saw on wa.dev that we must implement a function that is called hello. So when we do source.lib, Oops, vim source lib rs sounds good. We see here our bindings, and then we implement a function that is hello. And yeah, what should we do with the hello Bob component? We say hello Bob, right? That's that's what I mean. Keep it simple. So where are the bindings coming from? And this is the important thing why I like to keep this or uh, to do the WIT files or the WIT definition separate from the implementation. As soon as you type cargo component new, it will generate all the files for you. And the first time you build the component, it will generate the bindings for you. So that means in the source directory, there is a file called bindings.rs. Okay, again, something important to say, that's why I'm here, hello. Um, you type cargo component new, dash dash lib, dash dash target, something that is available on wa.dev, and then you hit enter. Next thing you do, you open VS Code or you use Vim or whatever, go in the source directory and the binding.rs file is not there yet. Because with the components, when you use cargo component new, the bindings will be generated the first time you build the component. Okay? So, what you do is, I recommend this, you initialize your component. Next thing you do is cargo component build. You build it at least once because this will give you in VS Code when you have the Rust Analyzer installed or when you use Vim and have some shady interesting things in Vim that you can see what is possible in Rust and what bindings are available. It will read the bindings and you will have code completion and stuff, okay? So my pro tip is cargo component new, next thing you do without even implementing anything, cargo component build. 
because this will generate the bindings. And then look, it's super, super e easy. You see the mod exports, then you see the tipx thing, then you see the package name, hello Bob package, and then you see the mod hello, and then you see the function that is called hello. So it's like reading through this tree and say, okay, what is the, the actual function that I have to, or the type of the function I have to actually implement? And this is what we see then in the implementation when we do librs, we have tibx, hello, package, bob, hello, and then this is already there when you uh, generate the component using cargo component new, and here is this Rust function called unimplemented. So you can't build it, there's nothing in here, um, but this interface is there, and how do Rust know that this is a string? Pro, pro question? because the wit package we used to generate the bindings from had this data type string. That's why Rust knows it's a string. If it's a list, an object, and this is not bound to trivial data types. The wit definition language has a huge thing of, of types, booleans and characters and strings and objects and lists and arrays and whatever you can think of. Because out of this wit file, we generate non-trivial data types per language we target um, this definition. Okay, so we have implemented a very complex function that is printing or sending back hello Bob. And next thing we do is we can now build the implementation because this is a component, okay? So now what we can do is cargo component publish or cargo component build dash dash release. This will build the component. And this is the actual component, okay? Super. Now this is a component, and this is something we can also publish, and I've already done this as well. So this is the package, and this is the implementation. And one thing that I think stood out here is, now it's saying on the top right, right next to the SHA-256 hash, it is a component, okay? It's not saying it's a WIT anymore. Now it's saying it's a component. Is that clear? So this is a real component. The other one was an interface definition. This is a real component. Okay, so now we have a component that just prints out hello Bob. Amazing. Next thing we want to do is we create, and this is something I can definitely do in three minutes. Next thing is we would like to create an HTTP based component because I am a web guy. I would like to have a web server when I send a get request to it that prints out hello Bob by consuming the component we have just created. To do this is again, same idea, first of all, we define a, for this component, I like to define um, a WIT file. So we start again with a very simple definition saying we have a package and then we import the hello function. Import means to this component, there is an interface or a contract defined for the hello Bob package. And this hello Bob package is the, ex the, this has the export hello. And in this component, we import this function binding. And while composing these components together, WebAssembly or the WebAssembly, the, the, the WEC tooling is smart enough to know, okay, this contract is fulfilled by this component and the other contract is fulfilled maybe by another component. And then we include the WASI HTTP proxy world just to be able to send HTTP requests and responses. So, it's the same for the hello Bob world. Similar complicated, right? Next thing we do, we build it and we publish it to wa.dev. Hello, minions. Um, so we publish it. Again, what stood out? It says whip, wit and not component. And so again, this is an interface. Now we can program and implement again this interface or contract from any language that is supported by the component model. Rust, Python, Go, whatever, okay? Interestingly, what it says here, what is the export? It is an HTTP incoming handler. Incoming as an export because we send an HTTP request to this component and receive a response. So we export the incoming handler because we receive an HTTP request. That's why it says incoming handler, not outgoing handler. 
that's sometimes an interesting problem, you have to think about the component. The component receives something, and this function must be exported to the runtime, okay? That's why we export the incoming handler, okay? Good. Um, and in the import, you see on the very first line, we say, hello, Bob, package the hello function. Okay. Now we, do, we did the same thing. We build this and we publish it. And now we need to actually create our server component. And that is the hello, Bob, server. The hello, Bob, where's the server? Oh. There is the hello, Bob, web. So, and this is now the final component. And here, we created this hello, Bob, web component, again, with cargo component, new, and we targeted the width definition of the web, not the hello, Bob thing we did pr previously, but now we would like to have this HTTP handler. Okay, so in, in the implementation, same thing, we have the bindings, and in the... This here, now this looks a little bit more complicated, but it's simple. Just use, look at the very, f the very first lines where we have the use statements. Remember, we targeted the WASI HTTP definitions. That's why we import everything we need for the HTTP request things. And then we use the Tibex hello Bob package hello hello thing. That's what we just published to the registry. And then we implement the handler and when you see the line, I'm not sure when I do set num, or we can actually see the line numbers. Let me see. Set new, perfect. Um, so line number 14, we see this hello function. And this hello function comes from the hello Bob package where it should print hello Bob, okay? So what we actually do, and Rust knows this because of the bindings.rs file, and the bindings are generated manually when we target the component and then say um, cargo component build. We'll build the bindings, and because we have the bindings, Rust knows that in the Bob package is a function that's called hello, and that returns a string. Okay, good. When we build this now, so you can do the exact same thing here. You can say cargo component, cargo, okay, forget about it, cargo, component build release. So that means we don't use the request, we can use underscore, so then we don't have a warning. But now we have this hello web wasm thing. When I do wasm time surf, and then where's my mouse here, and we would do this, because it's a component that targets the, uh. hmm. Okay, so now it's saying, fine, that's an actual component we can load on wasm time, but you imported this hello thing, but there's no matching implementation found for the linker, because what we did not do yet is we did not include the WebAssembly binary that has the implementation of the function in this. We did not compose the two components together. That's why it's not working. So that's the final step. So, and this is pretty easy because what we have done before is we publish the component web and the component for Bob that says hello Bob to wa.dev, right? And now there's a very, very cool tooling that's the WASM package manager called WEC. Not WECKAGE, but WEC. Um, and the WEC thing. And this is neat. Because if you install WEC on your machine, you can type this. And as I made the packages public, without even having anything on your machine, anything else like WEC installed, with this command, WEC plug, plug, tipx, hello, Bob implementation, and the server, with this command, we stack both components into each other. We create a new component called service.wasm out of the hello Bob implementation and the Bob server components, okay? And this is important because we remember the Bob implementation we saw in wa.dev is a component and 
the Bob server is a component. And now we combine both components into each other and get a new one called service.wasm. And when we do this, there is a service.wasm. It should be already here. Service wasm. There is a service wasm. So when we run this, wasm time, huh? No. Service.wasm. So now it's listening on HTTP port 8080. Is it bigger? We curl. Does it say 8080? Perfect. Okay, and it says hello, Bob. So what happened? The request hit the component with the WASI HTTP implementation. The handler called the component with the export hello Bob. The function we have implemented in the other component just returns the string hello Bob. And because it returns the string hello Bob, we can see here hello Bob. Okay? And the only thing that matters, absolutely that's the most important thing, is then when it comes to this Stacking of components and creating of components. Very important, that's my last word. When we stack the components to each other with this WAC command and plug, we used actual components. We used implementations, like the implementation and the web, uh, the server. This is a component, this is a component. The package is a type and web is a type. These things, hello Bob web, are super important when you type something like cargo component new dash dash lib dash dash target. And this target means what interface, what contract are you going to implement? You're not targeting a component, you're targeting a WIT interface. Is that clear? That's the most important thing when working with WADF, with WAC, with plugins with putting things together, keep it strictly separated, have your WIT definitions somewhere and see them as contracts you define and then have your implementations separately. And if you use Rust, make sure you do something like cargo component new lib dash dash target and then target something that's on wa.dev or, or somewhere else. But make sure that from your Rust project, you target this implementation. It's a lot easier for you in the development mode to, otherwise you have to change version numbers and things by yourself in the cargo.toml. It's just not as efficient as you do uh, this. And you get free documentation on wa.dev for your WIT files. Any of your developers can go here and look and you have the possibility um, to do this private and public. They are private packages and public packages. I have made all of them public, so if you go wa.dev, search for tibex, you see all my all my things, and then we can actually um, do this. Okay. So, na na na, na 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 na. Where we do use, that's fine. Questions? Do we have time for questions? Like a minute? Well, sure. Okay. Test. Real quick one. Uh, would you publish the service.wasm as another, like a composed component, or is that bad practice? Sorry, that was, can you, a little bit. Would you publish perfect. the uh, service.wasm component that's composed from the other components, or is that bad practice? You should only publish the small pieces. Um, you could totally publish the service.wasm to an OCI registry, for example, and pull it from an OCI registry so that you can directly run it using WASM time or spin, for example. Okay. So you can definitely uh, publish your final composed component. All right, thanks. Cool. Okay, if there are any more questions, I will be around today, tomorrow. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful and I have explained it well enough. Um, perfect. So, and then thanks for attending. <laughs>